Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, so my name is Pratik. Uh, I work as a part of IT school, right? So uh, thank you all and welcome everyone to the German course, right? So uh, I'll just uh, give you a brief introduction about the institute too. So we're into foreign language training, right? So we've been into training since 2001. And currently we are training into nine different foreign languages. So German is one of them. Um, so we'll come to the reason why, uh, you know, why all of you have chosen German. So German, of course, if you are in India, uh, working in, you know, out of Pune, Bombay or anywhere, um, German is quite a popular language. Coming yes. to the language itself, um, here are some details. Uh, so uh, I don't know if everybody ha is aware of this, but I'll just go through it quickly. So whenever you're learning any European language, right? So there are six different levels. Uh, so when you, uh, we are starting right now, which is with the A1 level. So this is the most basic level of the language, right? So this is the beginner level. So A1 and A2, in fact, form the beginner levels, right? Where you're able to talk about simple things related to yourself, your family, you know, your friends, where do you stay, where do you work and so on. Um, then as we move to the intermediate level, you move to the B1 level, which is the, you know, first or the basic intermediate level and then comes b2 which is the higher or the upper intermediate level so uh, it is expected that if you want to become an independent user of the language uh, that is you know to be able to manage to speak the language or understand it without uh, much help you should aim to do at least till the b2 level and c2 c1 and c2 levels are is where you get to uh, proficient level or an advanced level, you know, so here you are able to understand more complicated text. You're able to say read more technical documents. Uh, you're close to a native speaker if you are, um, you know, aiming for these levels. So uh, our recommendation is for whatever purpose you're learning the language, be it a job, be it for education, um, you should aim to do at least that is minimum till B1 level. So tomorrow, if you're, you know, um, going to study um, in Germany, uh, they might ask you if you have a B1 certificate or an A2 certificate. Uh, if you're planning for a job in your field of choice, uh, they might ask you for a B2 certificate. Uh, so uh, basically, I, uh, in, or simply put, what I can say is the higher levels you pursue, uh, the more confidence you are going to gain in the language, the more fluency you are going to gain in the language and the more you are going to retain the language because uh, obviously it's not a language that you use on a day to day basis. Right. So it needs uh, consistency, regularity, a lot of practice. Right. So um, as you do the course, of course, the trainer is going to be there to guide you. Andrea is here to help you with that. Uh, but you would need to do a lot of self-study too. So, you know, try to apply the language as much as possible. Uh, try to listen to the pronunciations. Try to read the simple text uh, that you will be having in your, you know, study material. Um, today we're going to learn the alphabet. I will tell you the letters and uh, the pronunciation. So obviously, um, the German alphabet is uh, pretty much the same with the English alphabet. So if you know that, that won't be a problem. Uh, the difference comes into picture when it comes to pronunciation, of course, because the pronunciation of the letters is very different from uh, the ones in English. So I have tried to, to write them uh, here. Um, based on your understanding, I hope. Uh, one thing that I want to tell you, which is very important, when it comes to pronunciating letters, don't think about English at all. You'd rather uh, think about Hindi because the letters and the pronunciation that you get in Hindi, it's much more similar to German than English is. So just uh, stick to your native language. If you know Hindi, uh, that's going to be easier for you. So, we are going to start with the letters. Um, <clears throat> I'll just uh, read the alphabet once so that you'll get an idea of how the, the letters sound and then we'll just uh, take them step by step, okay? So, 
the German alphabet yeah, yeah. sounds like this. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Q, R, S, T, U, V, B, X, Y, Z. Okay, I hope it wasn't too scary for you. <laughs> uh, now let's just uh, go uh, one by one. So A ah is pronounced as A, ah, as you have in Hindi A ah as well. Okay, I, I, I think this is how you translate um, uh, Hindi as well when you write. So when you are not writing in the Vinagri, this is the long A that you're using. That is basically the same uh, letter pronounced in German, which is A. Ah. Okay, just you open your mouth and ah, it's not like in English, for example, a. Then you have uh, b, uh, which is b. Okay, so pretty basic b. Uh, most of the consonants, uh, I would say until a g, they are pronounced with the e, ending in e. So it's going to be b, t, d, e, f, g. Okay, so it's pretty simple to remember, I would say. So back to back to B, this is B. Then we have T. Okay, T S uh, it's pronounced as T. This is how I uh, decided to write it. Again, you can uh, write them however you want so that you will remember that they are pronounced like this. Okay, use whatever letters you want use whatever pronunciation, uh, I don't know, methods that you know, so that they can help you uh, remember to pronounce them properly. So this is T, uh, this is D, this is A, simple again, it's just A, this is F, this is G. So uh, pay attention, it's not like uh, J, for example, or G as it is in, uh, in English. For example, in English, you would say gender, but in uh, in uh, German is uh, gay. Okay, so this is pronounced as gay. Then you have uh, H, which is ha. It's pretty simple. It's like the word ha in Hindi. Then you have E, which is basically a long E. Uh, then you have... Um, J, which is called as Yot. Okay, this is Yot. Just like it is written here, it's called as Yot. Then you have a K, which is Ka, pretty simple, Ka. Then you have L, which is basically the same as in English, L. This is the most easiest part, I would say, because they all rhyme with each other, L, M, N. Okay, so L, M, N, they are the same as in English, pretty simple. Then you have O, which is pronounced as a long O. Okay, you have O in, in Hindi as well. Then you have P, which is pronounced as P. Okay, P. Then you have a Q, which is pronounced Q which is more like, a, you know, a long U, ku. Then you have R, which is pronounced R. And then you have S, which is pronounced S. These two are very similar as well because they rhyme with each other. You have R, S. Then you have T, which is pronounced T. Okay. So you see that uh, German in comparison with English is more aggressive. This is why I say it's easier for you to learn it because even Hindi is an aggressive language. Instead of T, which is mild, you will say T, which is more aggressive. Okay, the same happens with the other letters. Uh, U is pronounced as U, simple. Um, uh, v is pronounced as Pau. This is a little bit more difficult to remember. This is why I am telling you maybe it's better for you to write them somewhere because um, when you write them, there might be a possibility that you will get them inside your mind as well. So if you don't have a photographic memory, 
uh, maybe writing will help. So you just remember that is FAU. It's pronounced as FAU. Then we have W, which is pronounced as B. Then we have uh, the last stream, X is pronounced just like I've written here. Then you have uh, Y, which is a little bit more complicated, uh, just as FAU. It's pronounced Y. We will talk about this strange letter, uh, which is uh, U, uh, later a little bit later after this actually and then we have a uh, tit which is the last uh, letter okay uh, do you have any questions so far do you think it is very difficult for you to understand the the way I chose to uh, write the pronunciation ma'am yes ma'am can you repeat Repeat the whole thing? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I okay. was disconnected. Oh, okay. Um, why don't we do that? Because you were disconnected. Let's just try to get some help from the others. Um, so maybe uh, you can help me after you have heard the pronunciation. Anyway, it's pretty easy because you have it on the slides as well. Uh, so... Let's take uh, the first row. Who wants to pronounce them from A to uh, G? Any volunteers? Okay, Aniket, yeah. tell us. So A is A. Uh, A, uh, very good. B is B. Very good. C, C. Mm -hmm, C, very good. D is D. Yes. E is A. Yes. Oh, F is F. Hmm? F. Oh, I forgot the F. I forgot. You forgot this one, G? F, F. Oh, F. Yeah, F, it's uh, just like you said, F. 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 And uh, G is G. Mm -hmm. Very good. Wow. Perfect. Thank you, Aniket. Thank Who you, wants to proceed? Who wants to proceed with? The next, ma'am, can I? Uh, yes, yes. See me? Okay. Yes. So H is ha. Yes. R is e. Yes. J is yot. Yes, very good. K is ta. Uh huh. And L M yes. N. Yes. Very good, perfect. Thank you so much, Simi. Who wants to to tell us the next row from P to V? Yeah. Um, Who was that? Pratik or? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to tell us? Yes, ma'am. Okay, tell us. P is P. Okay. Q is Q. Mm -hmm. R is L. Okay. S is S. Mm -hmm. T is T. Yes. U is U. Yes. V is Pau. Very good. Perfect. Thank you so much, Pratik. And who wants to do the last row? Ma'am. Who is that? Ma'am Swastin. Okay, you can tell us. Ma'am, uh, W is V, X is X, Y is Y, and Z is Z. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Do you have any questions so far? Ma'am, I have one question. Yes, please. So, uh, can you please repeat the pronunciation for Y for me? I mean, it's because it, the U is having two dots on it. So, it's Upsilon or, or it's Upsilon? Upsilon. Yeah, it's Upsilon. And I will tell you why. Because we are going to talk about this right now. Because there, uh, you know, we're going to talk about the exceptions. 
As okay. I told you in the beginning, um, English alphabet and German alphabets are the same. So these are all the letters that you have in English uh, alphabet as well, right? Well, in the German alphabet, you have four more distinct letters, and we are going to talk about them next. Um, I will tell you the alphabet one more time, and then we will go to the exceptions, okay? So we have A, B, T, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, V, X, Y, T. And now we are going to understand what is with that uh, strange U from Y. And we are going to answer Simi's uh, question as well. Um, so these are the exceptions. As I said, we have four more distinct letters in the German alphabet. And these are, uh, the first one is, uh, so basically the three of them, A, O, and U, you see that they have those little dots on top. Uh, does anybody know how do you call that in German, those little two dots? It is called as umlaut. Okay, so we call it as umlaut. So whenever you see a letter with those little two dots, that means that they are uh, umlaut. Okay, it's called as umlaut. So um, the first letter uh, is pronounced as a. Okay, whenever you see the a with the two dots on top, it's going to be pronounced exactly like. Then uh, you will have the letter uh, E, which doesn't have um, a phonetical transcription, so to say. So it's pretty difficult to find uh, a way to write how to pronounce it. You just have to um, not open your mouth like you would open to say O. You have to say E. It's like more narrow. So it's very narrow. It's like E. Uh. Exactly. It's uh. oh. And the same goes with the next letter, which is uh. 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 Exactly. So it's not a normal, uh. so in uh, the normal alphabet, you uh. have O and U, right? Just like we uh, have discussed earlier. Here you have U uh and U. These are uh, basically the, I would say, the most distinct letters in the German alphabet because it's a little bit difficult uh, to pronounce them as well, but I don't think it's going to be a challenge for you. So if you want, we can try together. Let's just say uh, 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 Exactly. And U. Uh. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, so these were the three uh, exceptions, the vowels. Now we have a consonant uh, which is called as a sharp assist. I'm not sure if you have seen this letter before. Uh, it uh, looks like this. So maybe if you install your uh, German keyboard, which I would advise you to do maybe for homeworks or I don't know. Task. Excuse me? Did anybody say something? Yeah, it's a beta sign. Yeah, exactly. It's a beta sign. It looks like the beta sign. So you can yeah. associate it with beta. Um, yeah. So this letter uh, looks like beta, but it's pronounced S. It's, uh, it's actually pronounced S. And it's called as uh, a scharfesis in German, which basically means, um, how do you call, uh, uh, sharp, sharp S. This is how it's called if you have to translate it. Uh, for a couple of seconds. Okay, so this is uh, like lesson number two. Uh, we are going to learn how to introduce ourselves and how to say hi and goodbye. So, uh, we are going to start with the, the basics. Um, 
Obviously, when you meet somebody, you will have to say hi. You will have to greet. So, uh, in uh, Germany, you can say hello, just like you say hello in English. It's perfectly fine. Uh, yeah. No matter if you uh, uh, meet somebody who is, uh, you know, maybe older than you and so on, you can just use hello in order to present yourself. So, you can just say hello or you can say good morning, uh, which is good morning. You will see that these are quite similar to... Uh, English. So you have Guten Morgen, Guten Tag. Do you know what is Guten Tag? Or can you think about what it could mean? Good afternoon. Yes, perfect. Mm -hmm. It's actually more like good day because they don't really say good afternoon like in English. They say good day because Tag is day and Guten is uh, good. Okay, so it would be good day. Okay, the next one. Uh, good Abend. I think good evening. There was somebody telling good me evening. yesterday, Good Abend. And good and, evening. Yes, perfect. Good evening. So you have Good Morgen, Good Tag, Good Abend. And then you have My Name is. What does it mean? My name is. My name is. Of course, <coughs> it's pretty simple, so you can. Uh, you know, guess it on your own without my help that it means my name is. Then, uh, ich bin. I am. I am. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And wie heißt du? Wie heißen Sie? What does what this is your mean? Name? What is how your name? Is your name? Uh, no, it's not how are you. It, what, what is, uh, it is what is your name? And here I want you to uh, make a thing clear. So you see that I have put uh, two options with slash between them. Why? Because the the first one, V high school, uh, it refers um, to uh, you as somebody who is uh, maybe at your same age. But if you ask V high Z, um, that means that you um, are respecting the person and you don't know that person. Basically, to understand this better, uh, you can make the, you know, you can compare it with Hindi. Because in Hindi, you have a polite pronoun. You have up. You can make the difference between up. So you're using up for elder people or for, um, you know, people to show respect to them or people that you don't know you have just met them. So you're going to use up. It's the same thing in German as well. So, um, uh, up will be this uh, Z that you that you will see here. And do is going to be more like uh, something like that. Like we are friends with each other. We know each other. We can use do. 